Good evening. This is Nuke Marine here with lesson four of learning the, to uh, in learning hiragana. Uh, currently, we're halfway done with the hiragana and, and roughly one quarter of the way done with all hiragana and katakana. So let's continue on. Uh, we got a few to cover, and hopefully, I'm looking to get two lessons recorded tonight and get them up on YouTube for you. Again, as like I've said, if you see any suggestion, have any suggestions on how to change this, how to edit, how to add annotations some better explanations please uh, either post it in the comments or if you go on uh, reviewing the, remember reviewing the kanji forums uh, please post there and I'll try to make these just as user friendly as possible that's the uh, basic idea so that somebody so that you're these are meant to be learned from uh, not just me sitting here uh, talking to myself uh, no matter how much fun that is alright so let's bring in here's our little blank canvas let's start off uh, begin let's just show you how much we've gotten it so far we filled in a lot of this and hopefully you've been doing daily reviews uh, going from the Romaji to the Aragana and continue with that every day again get that writing practice in fill up those blank sheets of paper with uh, Kana because it just physically shows you that you are making progress and it was one of the uh, and I had a lot, a lot of uh, it, it got me excited when I was going through that stage and so I can see that excitement carry over to other people as well so let's begin. The uh, first character we're going to cover uh, today. Let's write the uh, mana, uh, kana in here, or the Ramaji. This is not me. This is just like we had he. This is me. Me. Uh, that's pronounced as in May, uh, the month of May, the very old month of May. In mate, my best mate, mate, checkmate, May. Uh, so it sounds like M-A-Y. Uh, the keyword, just as you hear May, think of Maypole. Now if you don't know what a Maypole is, uh, pretty much it's sort of like uh, done during April or whatnot and during the Easter festivals and it's just a little strings, a little tall pole with these nice little ribbons hanging from it and children would grab it and dance around a little circle kind of creating a nice little pattern as they uh, weave in and out of each other so may but here in Kana land had some little red riding cape imagine a little red riding cape here and um, maybe without the little hook but just a little red riding cape a bit more uh, curved than normal and she wants to play the maypole game unfortunately um, there is no nice little pole so what she realizes is she looks around and she sees a no parking sign let's draw the no parking sign and there she is. She throws the cape on top of that no parking sign. So just imagine you got the no the sign there, and there's a little cape hanging from it. And she's going to use that as a little ribbon to do the little maypole dance. So just do the story again. It's the cape on the no parking sign. May the maypole is the cape on the no parking sign. Some words that use this kana. Sume, sume. Ame, ame. Menko, menko. And these are and just get some um, voice practices. Zume, ame, mango, mango. And with that, let's go on to the next character. All right, and that's May. Keyword is Maypo. When you hear May, think of Maypo. Next character we're going to cover looks very similar so this is where the importance of these visual stories are going to come into play is that these characters and all these kind are going to have similarities between the, each other and the stories are what's going to help you differentiate how to do it and by differentiate when you draw it and you also differentiate when you see it so here is the character we're going to be learning that's in new uh, new as in nuclear annuity uh, Gary Gnu new I, I knew it new uh, in this case, for the keyword, keyword, nude statue, 
the nude statue. All right. Now we're going to bring back a pre the uh, previous story. We're going to think of the maypole. Remember the maypole dance on the uh, in Little Red Riding Cape. She put her cape on top of the maypole, to do, on top of the no sign to create her own little maypole. And uh, but what you had here, so imagine is you had the Red Riding Cape, and there she is on the the maypole. But what you're going to find out is on top of this, on top of this no parking sign that she draped the cape was a nude statue. All right. For some reason, this nude statue is rather offended that someone is using her, the, new, the the parking sign the statue is on top of, and is rather doesn't like that. So what it's going to do is right at red riding cape, little red riding cape, this nude statue is going to be tossing boomerangs out at uh, little red riding cape, and maybe it's not so squiggly as that. So there's the cape. Uh, so there's the maypole dance, but there's the nude statue tossing boomerangs. So it looks like May, but the difference to with the maypole is that there's a nude statue tossing boomerangs. That's the uh, difference. And therein is the importance of the visual story. Because these two characters, May and Nu, look very similar. The only difference is, of course, uh, what I've already explained is the boomerang. And, and, and kind of the reason why we keep that as a boomerang, not something else like a yo-yo or a loop-de-loop -loop or, or a pigtail or whatnot, is this it? If you do, keep a pigtail in all your stories. If you use the yo-yo, keep a yo-yo in all the stories. Uh, keep it, like I said before in a previous video, is that keep it consistent, and you understand that whenever you see an image, you know, hey, that image is drawing this uh, this portion of the kana. Some words that use new. Some words that use new. Numa, Numa, yeah, it's sort of like the Numa Numa dance video. Sure, we'll go with that. Inu, eh, Inu is probably an early word you're going to learn when you start learning vocabulary. It means dog. Inu. Akenu. And if you looked at A ah, and you looked at Nu, and you, or if you looked at, um, we'll even put a May in here. This isn't part of the word, but you notice there's some similarities between these characters. And but you, because your the strength of your story, these similarities, even though they're, it's just a world of difference. The slight difference they are in these characters is a world of difference to you, because you can now differentiate the the characters. Whereas someone trying to learn from scratch, they, this may be their Achilles heel, as it will. So anyway. Uh, Numa, Inu, Akenu. We could also, if we wanted to voice this, make that Agenu. And, and if we wanted to put a little uh, glottal stop in there, Numa. If that's a, don't, don't take these as actual words, though. And we'll move on to the next character. Alright, two characters down in this lesson. Uh, got a few more to go. Now, uh, before we go, let me just introduce you to something, because it's going to be a little different than if you, when you buy the book. Uh, what I want to do is introduce you to this a little. Now that looks like the seven, so we'll, you're going to see this pop up in a few of the other uh, kana. Uh, when you see this, what I like to do is I think of just a visual imagery of Disney Seven Dwarfs. Um, uh, happy, grumpy, dopey, sleepy, whatever. Just think of Seven Dwarfs. Uh, I figure they're iconic enough. Uh, it's easy enough to come up with the story. So these are going to be coming up in, in the, I think, in the next five kana. So that's the reason why I use this. Is this means Seven Dwarfs. Uh, it's a very similar stroke in all these uh, kana. In, in fact, for this one, what we're coming up is. That's all right. Now, just like we say, it's not ra, it's da, it's not la, it's not di, it's not ri, it's di. So this is ro, ro. Slight roll of the tongue, but ro. Uh, that's ro as in rotan, petro, um, e pedro. Maybe pedro, who knows. Um, but ro. Uh, the keyword we're gonna look is think of is row 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 your boat. So here row think of row 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 your boat. And here's what's gonna happen. What you have are the seven dwarfs. And what they want to do they want to sing row 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 your boat by actually doing rowboats. Uh, unfortunately, the rowboats they have they they only they only fit seven. They can only fit four, up to four dwarfs. Since there are seven dwarfs, <coughs> excuse me, they're gonna need not one but two. To Su Robots. Now this is all one stroke, by the way. So 
but the seven dwarves and the tsu uh, merge into two. So row, row, row your boat, and they need they need two row boats in order to play to do row, row, row your boat. Now, some words that use row, 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 row your boat. Roku. Iro. Iro, Iro, Iro na. Color also, I believe. Ronkoku. And to get some voice practice in here. Rogu. Rongoku. Ro, Roku. Row, row, row your boat. And, yeah, okay, kind of looks like a number three, but hard to work that into the story. So let's go uh, finish this, go on to the next character. All right, three characters, Mei, Nyu, Ro. The next character we're going to be covering, similar to Ro, when you draw it out, but... Ru, as in Ru the day, crew, um, two life crew. Ru, roof. In fact, the keyword. Think of roof. Now, if you need to think of woof, woof, roof, roo, it maybe it's a house of uh, the roof of a dog house. So before, think of the. You remember we had roo, we had row. We had the seven dwarves in the row, row, row your boat. But these are kind of not the. Maybe these this seven dwarves though they need they only had one rowboat, not two rowboat. So what they did is they took the roof off of a dog lo, nearby dog house to then make the next rowboat. And obviously the rowboat of a, from a roof doesn't work so good so you end up when you're rowing you're just going around in this nice little loop now uh, what you could do uh, if you, as long as you don't realize that if you said I'm doing it and they're using to paddle around with this roof some boomerangs as their oars you can also do that too but remember though don't do this don't put the uh, the boomerang all the way out it stops at the curve it stops right there and this is all one stroke but so think of roof you can also think of the seven dwarves and the Sioux rowboats using using a roof as a as a rowboat and using a boomerang as their oars. Now some words that use ru, ru. so ru, roof, ru, roof, rowboat. <clears throat> Haru, Haru. I think that means, um, well, okay, it means spring actually. Saru, monkey, I believe. Nurui, uh, warm. Uh, it's, uh, I think that's like an early word I learned. Uh, it was kind of funny because of the website I learned it from Smart FM. It's like Fudo wa nurikata. Um, just seemed like really funny. So haru, saru, nurui. Let's do something voiced here real quick. Um, so instead of haru, paru. Instead of saru, zaru. Good. Uh, and that'll do it for that. Let's go on to the next character. Still using the seven dwarves in this. All right. So. We're still having. The, we've had our adventures with Red Riding Cape and the uh, Maypole, or the no no parking sign, the Seven Dwarves and their uh, adventures in rowing. Now let's start with the next character, and this is we're going to see something that's repeated over the next three kana, uh, three hiragana. Uh, key, word we're going to learn right now, or the, I'm sorry, the kana we're going to learn is wa, wa. That's again want wasp wa, um, w a wa. What I would like you to think now, here's what I want to do. This is going to happen in the next uh, three characters. Is instead of the seven dwarves doing the whole rowboat thing um, with the roof or without, is I want to think of the seven dwarves and now they're in front of their house. And in front of their house is the flagpole. Um, doesn't have to have a flag on it, just a flagpole. So when you think of it, think of a, a straight, or actually just a nice little drawing straight. And then the seven dwarves are going to be in front of that. So seven dwarves at the flag, and it's at the flagpole, there are the seven dwarves surrounding it. And in the next few stories, some things are going to happen during this. 
In, in this case, what we want to do is, uh, at the flagpole are the seven dwarves. And they noticed on top of the, and I guess some dopey and whatnot, bumped into the flagpole. And on top of this flagpole was a wasp nest. So that's the keyword here for wa. Wasp nest. Because this wasp nest is on top of this flagpole where the seven dwarves are walking around. And being, the, being scared of wasps like every other good, like every other person would be, they run off not in just one direction, but two directions. On the hopes that maybe the, or what, you know what the joke is, you don't have to run faster than the bear, you just gotta run faster than the, guy, than the next guy. <laughs> um, so, now that's all, that, by the way, this is two strokes, so let me draw this again. There's the seven dwarfs, but then, same stroke, continue on. Wah. Wah. That second, that, so there's only two strokes to this kana. So, let's do some words that will utilize this kana. Wa. Wani. Awa. Wataru. Wa. Wani. Awa. Wataru. Wa daru. If you want to do some voice and glottal stop practice on there. Uh, pretty much now again, because these next three characters, these next three kana I'm talking about are similar. These are where the stories have become important. I'll start showing you how they look similar next to each other. So let's go on to the next character. All right, so five characters down, a few more to go. I think we get up to eight or nine on this one, on this lesson. So we got the mei, the du, the do, the wa. Uh, so continue on with the uh, again. We got the seven doors in front of the house. So. Let's go with this next character. Day, as in like a day of sunshine. Kreit, hideo, day. Keyword. And again, just like it's not, it's like a mixture of the R and the L, and it's so that's how you're gonna look at it. Uh, day. Tis the season to be jolly. Day, 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 day. That type of day. Yes. Now, continue, continue on. Uh, the keyword. When you hear day, think of race. Now, when you think of the race, uh, here's what's happening. So, right now is a flagpole in front of the seven doors out, and there's the seven doors going around it. And what they were going to do is they're going to be having a race. Now, and obviously, they want to know, hey, where are we going to race to? So, one guy points out, hey, well, look at that haystack over there, right? Uh, that the wind kind of blew around. So, what you're looking at is look over there and there's this nice little haystack there with the little bit of the hay with the so they all run to it and they, the first person got to it won the race right hit the haystack and kind of like whereas before the haystack looked like this and now it kind of like looks like that after the dwarfs one of the first dwarf friends into it because he won the race so let's draw this again it's two strokes but the big thing is you look at the race you're thinking the haystack and you know it's a race to the haystack because it, it's now like everybody ran into it and now it's a deformed haystack. When you think of the hay, um, there we are. A race to the haystack. Race. Seven dwarves at the flagpole racing to the haystack. Now, let's get some words that use this. Hore. Hore. If I wanted to do this, bode. Or if I use the plosive, pode. Actually, I messed up. That was supposed to be new. So, nureta. Now, here's a good one. Here's another word coming up that's really good to look at. Now, to me, and, but I didn't figure out a way I'm going to get a story to do it, but I see that the, the race, the A, looks similar, at least that stroke, is more of an exaggerated part of the N, but no den. 
if you want to think of a story that can make those two so you can distinguish then please please do so uh, if not you can stick with the uh, story given to, uh, by Hazig that I adapted for here but pode nudetta if I wanted to nudetta no, nudetta noren and those are some words and again those will be in the Anki deck if you wish to review if you're using Anki to review which again highly recommend doing this on to the next character. Alright, so now we're going on to our seventh character of uh, seven of nine that we'll be doing. So just as we had Wa and Re, now comes the other part of seven dwarves at the uh, flagpole. So the word or the character we'll be learning. Now just this is the A e sound, so it's the A, e, more of an instead of it, what we think of as ne. It's ne A e, as in ne or neighbor. A. E. A uh, keyword, though, we're going to use is name tag. Now, when I'm saying name tag, think of a maybe an outdoor outback steakhouse or something. Let's say you got the waiters there wear boomerang shaped name tags mm, for whatever reason. And one of them does happen to be the seven dwarves for this story. So, here we go. Um, think back to the Wah. Now, at the Wah, it was you had the set at, at the flagpole, there was a Wah's nest on top of the flagpole. And the seven dwarves were out around it, one of them hits the flagpole. Maybe it's in the start of a race and whatnot. So they ran off in two directions. But Wasp being Wasp, they're going to chase after one of the groups. So in the, the two groups, they run after one. Unfortunately, they picked the wrong group. They picked the group of uh, one of the dwarves happened to work at Outback Steakhouse. And he has that boomerang name tag. So what he does, he takes that boomerang name tag and the nay name tag and tosses it at the Wasp to get them out, to basically kill them off before they uh, can, hurt, can sting the dwarves. Um, so there we go. Seven dwarves are at the flagpole. The wasp is at one, the name tag is being used as a boomerang. So when you think of nay, think of the name tag boomerang, and that's the difference. Nay. Hence we have wasp. There's a because he ran in two directions, two directions. And then we have the day, which is the race to the haystack. Here's something that's good. If this is the first time you've learned Kana, is that you're you're seeing a difference in these that uh, normal students, it, these characters here, in addition to uh, May and Nu, in addition to Ro and Ru, because, you know, you see these all side by side and you're hearing these stories to tell you what, hey, how to tell them apart, is you're getting an advantage that the uh, college student probably won't have. These are going to be giving college students trouble uh, throughout, the, throughout the semester or two that, until they get it all down pat. Uh, just because of the similarities they have, and so, but that's the power of the human imagination. You can keep these separate. It's a world of difference. It's the re same reason you, in English you will always you're not going to mistake um, B Q P uh, because you've seen it all the time. Um, you you built up the uh, just growing same from childhood. Same as people growing up in Japan will have seen these since childhood. They'll see this kind of since childhood. So to them it's just a, but you're learning as an adult. So use that imaginative memory that our um, the little vivid thought, the part um, abstract thinking that you use, this powerful mind that you have, to tell these differences that you can now see. And it will build up real quickly in your head. And then when you start reading, it just becomes second nature. Uh, so, we're on the nay. We're using the nay kana. And what we're going to do is go, learn some words, keeping the pattern that we have. Um, mane means to look similar to. Yone. Netsu. Um, I believe it was heat. Alright, so mane, yone, netsu. Uh, ne. Name tag. Ne. And if you want to, you can voice that. Netsu. Mm, I think that's the only thing there can be voiced. All right, we got two more characters. Um, uh, hopefully, you like. I'm gonna do uh, kind of change uh change uh, speeds a little bit on those two characters. Now we're on to character number eight uh, of of nine nine total this lesson. And here is actually something. Uh, it's a, ra a radical departure from Hazig's book, and it was actually a suggestion from a student. And the group of students liked it so much. It's like I, I had to adopt it. It was a very funny story. I think it worked a little bit better. Uh, it just works on um, 
Well, so let's just get into it real quick. First things first, let's look at now that's Sue as in soon, suit. Uh, keyword, same as Hazen gave, was um, we're going to use as soup. Okay, soup. But this is going to be a little bit different. What I want you to do is, um, reason being is there's, there's a little curve in here. Here, let me draw it real quick first. Um, think of this. Think of the T and the 9. Now imagine um, you had the T-1000. Think of Terminator. Terminator 2. You had the T-1000. Uh, he was sent back from the future to kill John Connor or whatnot. In this case, though, what we have is a T-9000. Uh, in the T-9000, his sole purpose was to go back and eat all the soup with his dagger-like tongue. Soup. When you think of soup, think of soup. And just think of this T-9000 who just likes to eat soup. Uh, maybe it's a malfunction in programming. Who knows? Um, so what we're going to do is think of the T, you can do, or the, or the dragger, think of the, with the dagger-like tongue, T9000 dagger-like tongue, so, but think of the T, and we're just going to kind of like do, also kind of looks like a 9. Now you can throw it like, you say, hey, that's a boomerang, or whatnot, that works, or a loop-de-loop, -loop. Uh, I just kind of like that, so soup, when I think of the soup, just imagine it's the uh, T9000 there, for some reason it's that metallic tongue coming down, it's sort of like a dagger, and just going in eating up the soup. That's just how I did. So it's two strokes. T nine thousand, and it just it to me it just sort of uh, works works better. I think it works better than the story that was given. Uh, so Sue, some words that work with Sue. The Sue. Uh, if you know a uh, blogger named Rudy Sumisu, this is yeah this is the Rudy of Rudy Sumisu. I don't know what the word means personally. Sune. I think that's a term for Rubik's Cube. Suda. Alright, so Visu, Sune, Suda. Now, uh, since this is one of those voiced ones, let me come down here. So here's uh, the S line. So we had the sa, and then that. So here's the u. So sa, that would also be su. So we could put su in there if we wanted to. In which case, down here, if the sa becomes za, su becomes zu. 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 All right. So if I come back up here to these, add the little voice mark to it. Di zu, zune, zuda. Di zu, zune, zuda. And with that, we'll go on to the last character for the lesson. And the last character for this video, or for this video lesson. Um, again, carrying on is going to do a slight departure from what we had in the book. Uh, let's start off first. Here's the pronunciation in Romaji. Emu. Mu. Uh, moon. Mu, as in moo cow. Um, moon. Moo. Uh, Samuel Adams, Mew, who knows? Moo. Now, what I want you to do is, okay, first thing I would like you to think of is think of, for this story, I want you to think of the curse of letter L. Now, when I think of the curse of letter L, I think of this. Well, let me draw it where I like that. Um, well, try to exaggerate a little bit. Imagine a bit more loop down here. Uh, that still looks pretty much, in fact, if you just did the L, you're probably going to in good shape. Here's what's going to happen, though. Imagine though you had the bottom part of that. So when I think of, here's the keyword, um, moo cow, moo cow. Think of the moo cow on the TL ranch. And so TL ranch, moo cow, when you think of moo, moo cow on the TL ranch. Because here's what's going to happen. Uh, you're going to have the T, of the, remember the T9000? And now you could do the SU, but here's what's actually, what I like to do is this, Think of that stroke for L. So you're going to do the T, and of the t and mix it in, in with the cursive for the uppercase L. So lowercase T, uppercase L. So here's the T, and there's the L. All right. Now remember, this is the Mu Cow on the T L Ranch, and what he's doing is you see is with his tail here, he's swatting flies off himself. So when you hear Mu, think of Mu Cow on the T L Ranch swatting flies with his tail. One. T L 
Moo Cow and the TL Ranch. Now, reason again, the reason why Hazy grouped this is because if you looked at Sue, mm -hmm. and you looked at, depending on how they do it, there may be some uh, similarities between Sue and the Moo. Uh, I think, though, these are so radical. I've never mistaken the two personally, so I think sinking as TL, you, one, you get a very comfortable feeling on how to draw it properly. Uh, I haven't noticed any problems with it. So it, it should smooth out really easily. Some words that use moo besides samurai. So yeah, so it's not samurai, it's samu. Samurai. Samurai. Tom Cruise in the last samurai. Moody. Uh, you probably hear that as like something useless or impossible to do. Mutsu. Komu. Enter. Um, eh, sure, why not? Let's do it. Samurai. Samurai. Um, sure, let's voice something. Moody. So, Mozu. M mo mudzu, mudzu, uh, gomu, <laughs> which is like a rubber, uh, elastic, sorry, I should say, although it can refer to rubber in another term, and, um, sure, why not, zamurai, I don't know if that means anything, but there you go, and those are some words to practice, so let's do, uh, let's, uh, close up this, this is actually a fairly short lesson, uh, let me go into the, uh, closing comments. So, with roughly, let's say, what is it, roughly two hours of study time, of, with two hours of study time, you've gone two-thirds of the way through of hiragana. And one more hour left, you'll be fully done with hiragana learning it. That still doesn't mean you, you still have to review. So, here are the characters we come over, Maple, for May, Nude, Nude Statue, Ro, 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 Wa, the Wasp Nest, it ace to the Haystack, Name Tags, using Name Tag Boomerangs against the Wasp. Soup, the T9000 eating soup, and the Moo Cow on the T TL Ranch swatting flies with its tail. And here we have, we've kind of filling in the blanks quite a bit. Uh, ain't got much left to fill out now. It's just a matter of what you don't know is less than what you, is now less than what you have learned. It used to be you didn't know anything if you were starting off with this. Uh, and let's sketch, let's go with that little, let's go with that little rhyme we were doing also just to um, th save things up a bit, which was the, um, I think I was doing it before, but we'll do it like here. So, here we had was the A, uh, Ka, I'm writing Ka because we don't know it yet, Sa, Ta, then we had the Na, Ha, Ma, we don't know Ya yet. So, A, uh, Ka, Sa, Ta, Na, Ha, Ma, Ya, Da, Wa, mm, da wa, mm. Now I know my kana. Now I know my kana. Din din don, din din don. And it, it, really, this is all you have to do. If you want, you can even start this now if you wanted to. You can just write all this straight down. Write akasata nahamaya all the way down. Da wa un. And then think of the, uh, then think of, going sort of like what I've done here. All right. And then this, all you gotta do is go across. So like here's the ah. So just remember a e u a o. So just go across a e u. I don't know what a is. So go o and and put a circle on a. Ka ki ku ke ko. And I know ka's voice, so I can I even add a voice mark to it. But I'm, I'm gonna skip that. So I say sa shi su se so, and I don't know some of these yet. And don't care about voice. So ta chi su te to. We uh, nani nune no. And this. It's really simple. You go through and you just fill it in. And you can start this now, but I, I don't know. Do a next hour study. Uh, spend the next couple of days. Go over my lessons on the next one. And fill out your hair gone. And then from here, you realize, hey, with here, it's easy to tell, hey, how, I, can, can you write these all down straight from memory from start to finish with no problem? You can even do the whole thing instead of um, akasata nahamaya rawa un. So, iki, shichi, nihi, mi, liwi, 
うくつとぬふむゆうくつつぬふむゆうぬふむゆう and don't worry about this some of these are uh, uh, fake pronunciations for kana but、uh, you'll figure it out as time goes along and however you want to do it so it's just one other example of how, how to、uh, do, get some、uh, review and practice in while you're at it、well, alright So that is lesson four. I will see you with lesson five. Hopefully, finish up with lesson six and get on. And again, as I said before, if you have any suggestions, any comments on how I can improve these videos, please state them in the comments or on the,、uh, re reviewing, the reviewing the kanji forums. And I'll be happy, if it's possible, to、uh, add some annotations or notes to the videos. I probably won't actually re record the video、uh, unless there's a desperate need to. So thank you very much. And see you again.